Hello, everyone, ladies, gentlemen, Martians out there. This is the <laughs> I Don't Get It podcast, and we have um, celebrity meeting horror stories today. But to kick yeah. it off, obviously, we have a couple I Don't Get It's. Naz, start us off. Okay, mine's so dumb, you guys. But I was at the Grove the other day. and I don't get it. I don't get why anthropology is so goddamn expensive. Oh I don't God. get Who anthropology gives, in general. I don't get I don't anthropology get for clothing. For clothing. For clothing. Who pays four hundred dollars for a peasant dress it, from the forties? They also, look all like go maternity to free dresses. people then for the cute version of that. Yeah. Exactly, Lord. Free people is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. I would, ju- but just for once, I would like to walk into anthropology and walk out with more than a goddamn keychain. Or like, like it a makes mug. me feel like the poorest person in the entire world. Everything in there is. Yeah. Like three thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. everything they have there Why? for homeware, every houseware stuff. <clears throat> all every house, all every houseware stuff. <laughs> um, um, also, they have. we we deducted yesterday that Ashley needs to have some kind of speech lesson. Oh, you absolutely. Why, Ashley? You, have you good mean Lauren did? Lizzie and I decide that you have to take a public speaking class or something again what? because your Why? words just tend to jumble up really fast. Wait, my was totally fine during that. You know, you were fine during that, but I'm just. Also, I mean, in per- in real life, I have total issues coming up with sentences there you go <laughs> i know that but lauren but a lot of people do you do too yeah but my career isn't <laughs> fucking talking to <laughs> you. yeah well lauren uh rude <laughs> actually if it makes and you- i was totally fine on the mic over there no, you're fine you're what did fine I mess up with i messed up the one time because the guy had bullet points in the wrong spot no, when you're definitely fine. It's just, it's very funny because you just go into places winging it totally. But I feel like just 10 minutes of small prep would make all the difference. Um, are you kidding me? You think <laughs> that guy was prepared? Um, He just had a lot of energy. What so it seemed like he wasn't. About? Oh Where my God. He didn't know what, he didn't have like a script of his own. He we kept were saying at, like, sorry, um, I'm reading from the thing. And then he was like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. What are you guys okay. talking about? We did this Down syndrome walk yesterday and Ashley was, um a speaker there and she like welcomed a speaker i was a like a co-host yeah you were like one of the hosts of the walk well they like wanted me to read off winners for awards and you know run off the names of the teams as they walked by if it makes you feel better whenever i find it I'm in the same career as you, and sometimes I find it hard to come up with sentences. <laughs> yeah, just forming full, complete sentences that make sense is actually harder than it sounds. Well, basically, <laughs> it's every- really hard, you guys, to say something clear and succinct and like get your point across in a way that everyone would understand. But it. also it's in sometimes- a fun way, but in a fun and engaging way. Yeah. Well, Do when I you think about. Ever? No. Oh. Oh. When you think about how we actually talk, we like never speak in proper That's what I'm language. Saying. Yeah, you know what I mean? Issue. Like when I write, my writing is amazing because right. I just have a second to like really form out like the correct subject right. verb agreement. But in real life, we barely ever complete sentences. We have, is a verb we have to <laughs> begin speaking really, though, to each it? other in a less lazy manner well, Lauren so and we i are the sense. worst together yeah because we literally can like mumble we'll just say like to each other word, like yeah. one word and well because you guys understand each other yeah. so well but even when i'm out in in public i'm just like lauren you must think of how you're gonna end this fucking sentence you <laughs> that's so funny i think a lot of it is also laziness too because you guys know i'll be talking to people and then after a certain point, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, just, yeah. I don't yeah. even want to finish this. Sentence. And I'm like, right? Like, you know what I mean? That's right? the way you kick it off to somebody else. You're like, I'm done with this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Lauren, let's be real. That that was not anything about preparation. They didn't give me anything. They didn't give me names. No, they I, didn't give I'm me not any sort of script. That. No, I'm just saying in general, in life is what we were saying was that we need to let... We need to be less lazy. No, that is totally yes. true. But if it was based on anything I did on the mic, no, that was no, absolutely not on me. It kind of just got the conversation me. going about what how we should be less lazy. Um, really? that that was you only talked yes. about me, didn't you? <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> then why would you say you need guys, to take it? Because I know you right are now. the one that has quietly quietly it as the career. Walk away. Anyway, anyway, all right, back to anthropology. that, but actually, trigger her, Lauren. You triggered her. Yeah, but you know what? That makes me think of another thing. This is something that Lauren's always said about herself. Mm -hmm. She feels like people don't care about what she's saying. So So I wrap it up real quick. Wraps it up real quick. She doesn't tell long stories, Mm -hmm. and. 
Yeah, Lauren, that's annoying too. I never do that. Yeah, but then no, like you, you also do. trail off and you don't sound super confident when you're like talking mm-hmm. to like new people, people that you know don't necessarily care about you. So I've been doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Now I've been all subcon- subconscious. No, self-conscious. Self-conscious. Well, speaking of <laughs> self-conscious, <laughs> speaking of self-conscious and meeting s- celebrities and having a bad experience, Lauren ruined my only bad experience <laughs> with a celebrity. Like what I did, yes. So you guys all know that Jonathan Van Ness, obviously from Queer Eye, came on our podcast <laughs> and we all, he like walks in like so fucking fabulous, just like oozing glitter and happiness. And he's like, I need to like smoke a spliff before or like a joint. <laughs> So these two didn't smoke and I smoked weed with Jonathan before top five moments of my life. But so the whole podcast, I'm like, hi. And I'm like, hoping that I'm like coherent and sounding normal, like educated. And I like want Jonathan to like us, obviously, and me because I'm fucking obsessed with him. And I was so starstruck. And we kept him longer than we should have. Mm. So when the podcast was over, he was like, all right, thank you guys so much. Gave us like real quick hugs and just like ran out. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the door shut, Lauren goes... I hoped he liked us and I was so fucking high everyone. And I literally for like the entire day, Ashley, where did we go that day? I heart festival that night. Uh, yeah. Yeah, We we went to, we went to, was it called? I forget what it was called. It was I heart something. Wango Tango. Oh, Wango Tango. Basically the entire day for 18 hours. I was like, oh my God, Jonathan didn't like us. He fucking didn't like us. And Ashley, remember you're like, no, Lauren just does this. Yeah, Yeah. because I just assume no one likes us. He said like, I love you guys. It was so fantastic. I felt better after that. But you know, seeing someone run out of your house like it's on fire made me feel a little bit like, "Eh, well, we got a good podcast. We we run like it was on fire. We ran over, Lauren. I know, I know. I felt very bad. I felt very bad about that. Yeah. See, we ran over way bad. I can't talking we went we went we we went oh, oh, what do you have we went way tumor. over we, we went, went way over time. oh my god i don't what, even what know what did you say right I went, we went way over like and i wanted to say long like we went long i just should have said we went long <laughs> Yeah, but can I go back? I know that that's, that was a great transition, Naz, but I'm not done. <laughs> oh no, Ashley, we're done. No, please, I have been getting so self conscious. Okay, what's about wrong? This Let's talk about it because I feel like nobody really cares what I'm saying, so I'll trail off or like I won't say things confidently anymore, and that is when I start mumble jumbling sentences really? and not using like the right verb tense or when something. You, you know when you'll be like, wait the most. Like, I'll be like, I were this. Like, um, you're like, <laughs> I, like, if I was like, I was hungry, I'll be like, I were hungry, you know? You're like, I was hungry, you know? But I don't know why I do that because I, I think, think well, I've, if everyone I, felt like me that no one cares, then there would be no interesting people in the world and then everyone would act like that and then there'd be no interesting stories. So you can't also be like that, you know? So you all, you add those stories to human society. Okay. So they enjoy your stories confidently. Wait, but Ashley, when have you felt this way recently? Almost all the time. And this is just a recent thing? Not like totally recent, but more often. <laughs> but more often more than often. usual. <laughs> <laughs> more often. Okay. Well, another thing about me is I feel like I need to add an adjective to everything. And I think that's like a modern thing. I think we all do. We like, all like have say... to say very, and it's like often. It's like. Why did I have to feel the need to say like very often? Like we don't yeah. very often, just often. Because we're yeah. dramatic. But yeah. I think I think when you say very often, that's more relatable in how like people actually speak. And if you just cut it off at often, that's then the way that's, like, English that's how would I tell like you, read like, yeah. journalism. You're not really supposed to add a lot of adjectives. I go to the coffee shop often. Who the fuck talks like that? Yeah, yeah like I go right. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. always at the coffee shop. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah. I don't know, but it's really getting to me. Okay, and I really need to remi- remind myself from here on out that, like, it doesn't really care. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter Aww. if they're paying attention or not. <laughs> I just need to. Lauren, you really act. fucked with Ashley's head, I and now we can't record like, like they care. Okay. You know? <laughs> but also, like, why do I give a fuck if they care what I'm saying or not? Because they're paying you. So also you should practice in front of the mirror, whatever the subject matter is, and say a couple full sentences of what your thought is that you want to get out. And also what I do is I talk in my car a lot yeah. to myself because no one knows yeah. that you're talking yeah. to yourself about random things. Because I know at Clever, I'll have to randomly talk about A Star is Born, right? So instead of knowing in my head that I love the movie, I'll say out loud in my car, like, 
and really articulate yeah. how and why I loved the movie. What I'm gonna Jared's say? Jared's very good at that. It's a head-to-mouth thing rather than just like, yo, you're doing it in your head, but you need it to come exactly. out of your mouth. Well, guys, what I think is maybe my issue... I feel so bad for people, people waiting are gonna, on a bad celebrity story. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> people are going to be like, well, Ashley, you probably have like a brain problem. There's probably something in your brain that you need to go no, get, it's like MRI. No, lazy No, language. that's not it. No, because I have very clear concise and well articulated thoughts in my head right but as soon as i open my mouth to take you know to put the mouth there they're, <laughs> they don't sound good all right so i you, can't do it no you, they do you i've known you for so long now and you are really good at saying it out loud i think you're maybe just in a funk right now because of lauren you know i don't think that's because of lauren maybe it's because jared's so good at talking that, that you it makes me much. feel like I'm really shitty at talking. Maybe that could be because you're around him a lot. Yeah. So you're constantly comparing yourself to how he's articulating things. Well, I do have to say this, that like I feel like he's very cerebral yeah. sometimes. Well, he's also like has a lot of emotions and feelings. But like a lot of my opinions come from like emotions and mm-hmm. feelings that I can't necessarily put into words. Right. Like when I see a movie, mm-hmm. Jared like had so many words to say on A Star Is Born where I was like, I felt moved by it. Right. Like I felt emotion. I was, a lot of emotions were evoked by that. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't like analyze the shit out of it. It's just yeah. all about how I feel versus le- versus what I think. Right. I think you nailed it. I think it's Jared because what you're <laughs> expressing is what, how most people are. So yeah. it's like me. It's like most yeah. people walk out of there and they're like, oh my God, how was the movie? Amazing, incredible. Yeah. And then you're done. But because we have to speak to it, yeah. Yeah. Jared's really good at yeah. it. I have to like form it in my head and think, okay, why did I love it? And how can I explain that to another person instead of them just like scanning my emotion? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> scanning my emotion. emotion. You know what That's what, it's like, well, I don't even know if I want to bother telling you because I just rather you scan my body <laughs> yeah. and really understand yeah. what I want to put out there. Right, right. All right. Well, wow. Thanks for the vent session, guys. Yeah. You guys out there. Dr. Mike wasn't even here. (laughs) Let me know if you feel like you have the sim. A similar problem. Similar. Let me know if you think that you have a similar problem to me. As me. A similar problem as me. No, a similar problem to me. I would say, let me know if you guys feel the same way I do. That's what I would say. (laughs) Maybe you're just trying to speak too properly. Do you think that's what it is? No. <laughs> All right, read us some stories, right. Ash. <laughs> okay. Let's see it. Let's practice by reading some good okay. celebrity stories. <laughs> Lord, right. You fucking kill me. <laughs> uh, first off, before we started reading, I wanted to tell our own bad celebrity stories. Okay. Oh, yeah. And these, and when I put the tweet out there in the Instagram story, I wanted people to interpret that as like they had negative reactions from the celebrity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But some people just send stories of like a very unfortunate event that like unfolded in front of a celebrity oh. or something like that. This one, the oh. first one I'm going to start with is one where it's just like a horrible environment okay. overall. Got it. Like a horrible experience. Yeah. But I want to go around the table and talk about our negative experiences interacting right. with the celebrity. You go first because I have one in my well, head. I already went. Yeah. Mine was the Jonathan one when I was high. Okay. Yeah. So the the one that pops out in my head when people ask me, have you ever had a bad experience with celebrity? It was Jason Alexander, aka, <gasps> yeah, George Costanza. Really? Why didn't you tell me that when I told I've you totally I met him? I totally told you this. I, I told, told you, you told I him? met him? Yeah. He, you had a good experience and I did not. Oh, maybe I forgot. Sorry. So I was at Tyson's Mall in Northern Virginia and... Don't ask why Jason Alexander <laughs> was there in the suburbs of DC. <laughs> but he was in front of me at the movie theater kiosk and it was a long line. It was like a Friday or Saturday night. All the kiosks had like seven people waiting for it. And you know how demented people can be with the kiosk. So I'm second in line, you know, I'm just about to approach the kiosk and this short man and a regular sized lady come and cut in front of me. And I was like, you know, I threw my hands up in the air. I didn't say anything. I was like, what? Like, you know, I I was all by myself. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of doing the, grandest physical reaction Can i, I could do a do. quick side note yeah i love that you like throw your hands up in the air you go what like as an adult <laughs> like i don't think i do that as a human really and i've like always loved that about you because you like are an actual cartoon character <laughs> like you'll be like ah yeah <laughs> yeah my arms have a lot of expression i yeah anyways keep going so i'm like who the hell does he think he is i'm pretty sure like i looked around like behind me and i was like um what the hell 
who is he? And then he turns around after getting his tickets, and it was Jason Alexander. And I wanted to say something very badly. Be like, oh, really? You think you can cut in front of line? The cut in front of the line? So why... Like how? Would, how anything. could he do that? Like just he just stepped moseyed in front of on you? up and stepped in front of me. Yeah, that's really fucking rude. Yeah, that's crazy. And Can I love believe? him. I love him so much. That makes me really. He mad. probably just wanted to get us taking get in the theater before anyone realized it was him. Maybe I was twenty three or twenty four at the time, so I wasn't in like some super confident mind right, space. You were not. If it was today, you're probably like I a puffy coat and wide you know? leg jeans. Yeah, I may have said something if it was today. Excuse me, I'm Ashley Akinetti from the Bachelor <laughs> franchise and I would like to see this movie just as much as you do. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be super nice, but you know what is nice? What is nice? Ritual, because it doesn't make my tummy hurt. You guys, you know you've heard it before here on the I Don't Get It podcast. We love Ritual because it has this special design where it bypass. There's a it's a delayed release capsule that bypasses your stomach to to prevent nausea. So you can take a vitamin without feeling like you need to eat a lot on top of it, or that you got to be scared of having a tummy ache because Ritual gets you. Ritual is vegan, sugar-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free. We got it all. Um, made in the U.S. without synthetic fillers or colorants. They're also mint-scented, everyone. So you don't get, so you don't swallow the pill, get the fishy breath, oh, fishy God, burp. So gross. It's mint-flavored, mint-scented, so you don't have that gross aftertaste. And the best part about Ritual is that it's subscription based. So you, when you run out of a bottle, you're not like, oh man, I got to get in my car, drive to the pharmacy. Like it shows up right at your door. You will have no gaps in your nutrient levels, people. And it's <laughs> only $30 a month. And like I said, delivered right to your door. And buying the Omega-3 yourself is basically the cost of an entire Ritual bottle, which is crazy. You get so many different vitamins in that one. Exactly. One so fill the gaps in your diet with the best source ingredients. And it's a dollar a day. <laughs> And it's happiness guaranteed. No questions asked. 95% of women do not get the vitamins and minerals they need on a daily basis. Ritual created a smarter vitamin with the nine essential ingredients women lack the most. So go to ritual.com slash get it. Choose clean ingredients backed by science. Sign up now at ritual.com slash get it. Um, so I think m- mine was... Samuel L. Jackson. Oh my really? god! What yeah. another Lauren? person I love. Yeah. So that was on my list. I put Samuel L. Jackson oh, okay. on our personal bad yeah. story list. And guess what? What? Somebody else emailed us about Samuel really? Jackson. Really? Yeah. Okay. So we were leaving the White House correspondence dinner. We would go there all the time and just try and meet as many celebrities as oh, possible. You can. Anyone can go. No, you can go like. <laughs> to the hotel it's held at and just chill there and meet all the celebrities you but, guys are like the uh, like expert groupies yeah, we, like, yeah. you know how we to had get our places. real groupies we had a phase. heyday yeah um so when all of the celebrities are like f- um shuffling out of the dinner we go up to Samuel L. jackson we're like hi can we take your pic can we take a picture with you he goes you guys obviously weren't at the dinner and listening to what i said or no what the president said or something, or something like, that. like that and we were like Okay, and it was just like it was just scary because he's a scary man, yeah, you know. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily like, the worst thing that's ever had me, but he walked away and didn't take and a picture it was with a celebrity. Us. Yeah, yeah. it Damn. was just really weird for a celebrity to talk back to. We like were that. young, and we weren't being rude. Yeah. Okay, so let's read the so Samuel L. Jackson story. Oh, there's a Samuel story. That's what I said. Oh. Yeah, that's why it's so crazy. Amazing. Okay. I had already put him on our list, and then I got Damn. an email about him. Damn. Okay. The email goes. He's big time, though. I know. Doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> I know. I'm just saying. He's like up there with the Angelina. Oh, I have another one, but continue with the Samuel Jackson. Okay. This says, my meeting, the, here is my meeting, a celebrity horror story for your enjoyment. Once I was on a plane with Samuel Jackson flying from LA to Cleveland. My mom was with me and pointed him out discreetly, and I was super excited. Once we got off the plane, he was walking about 20 feet in front of me, and no one was around. My mom has always been a bit pushy in trying to make me be more outgoing than I naturally am. So she was like, go get a picture, go get a picture. So I caught up to him, and I quietly said, Mr. Jackson, I was wondering if I could get a picture with you. He looked back at me and flatly responded, why would you want to do that? (gasps) 
Aww. And then my mom went into nervous talking mode. Oh, no. And she started saying how we were fans of his movies and just excited to see a movie star in Cleveland so that's, since that doesn't happen very often. Blah, 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 blah. And then he just stood there silently staring at us. And he finally said, well, are you going to take the picture or what? Ew. That's rude. And she said, we didn't know what to do. So we just took one. Here you go. Here it is. Came out blurry, but I couldn't ask for another one, obviously. I was too embarrassed to post it anywhere anyway. Oh, that's Aww. really sad. I know. Oh, well, and why would you want to sweet, very pretty girl. Why would you want to do that? What? Oh, my God. She's so cute. She looks I like know. Haley Steinfeld. She Holy does. shit. Um, that's traumatizing. Oh my yeah. God. And then you'll never watch his movies the same again. I know. I know. That's what's so scary about meeting people you're huge fans of. I dated this guy who was a huge fan of Kobe Bryant and Kobe's notorious for not being like the friendliest. Oh, really? But he's so like the, you know, he was like the basketball player and Kobe obviously was like mean to him and he was like, it ruined his life. Oh no. <laughs> not mean to him, but he's like, I- I'm not like talking to you. That's bro. why I don't want to meet any of my favorite people anymore. Cause I'm just like older and I know I'm not going to mm-hmm. like end up marrying any of them. So like, yeah. I don't really want to meet them and just ruin my entire I experience. I decided after Jonathan that day with all that anxiety. You didn't want to. I just, no, because my biggest fear was that season three was coming out the following yeah. week. Remember when our podcast was? And I go, season oh two. my God. Two. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I go, oh my God, if he doesn't like me, am I going to be able to watch these? I know. But thank God he did like us. Yes. I think he really did. I had heard from him (laughs) soon after. (laughs) He FaceTimed me soon after. So say no to drugs, guys. So you're Um, fine. You're fine. Who's the guy from Desert Housewives, the cute gardener? Jesse Metcalf. Jesse Metcalf. Okay. So my friend and I were. BT dubs. Really? really? Well, my friend and I were going into this club in New York when I was living there. And. I, we heard this guy yell from an Escalade, like, you girls want to come hang out with me? Mm-hmm. And we were like, no, we got to go in here. And then he rolls, he steps out of the car and you're like, that's Jesse Metcalf. And we're like, no, we still don't want to go. Wait, yeah. he, oh my he God. stepped out of the car. He yeah. didn't say it's Jesse Metcalf, did no, he? No, oh, but okay. like, he stepped out of the car. He's like, you sure? And we were like, yeah. And then he grabs our arms. Oh, wow. And then he's like, come on, girls. It'll be fun. And then Johnny, long hair Johnny, had to like shove him. Really? Yeah. Well, and it was that's like, like a salt beat. Yeah. That's so weird. Well, that leads perfectly into this story from Julie. She goes, so I'm not sure if this counts as a celebrity story because he's pretty D-list, but I'll tell it anyway. When I was 15 visiting my friend in LA, we were at the Grove and I heard some man at a bar yelling, come here, in a loud slurred voice. I look over and behind me, I look over and behind me to see if he was talking to someone else, but sure enough, it was me that he was talking to and he was Andy Dick. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I walk over and Andy you, Dick is a creepy uncle so your creepy. family warned you about. So yep. creepy. So I walk over and he grabs my arm and tells me that I'm pretty. Then Ew. I tell him I have to go find my friend, but he won't let go of my arm. I call my friend over to save me and she whisks me away. But the bottom line is if you see a drunk Andy Dick <laughs> on a Tuesday afternoon, run the other way. This is what's wrong with like guys. That's disgusting. Ew, like, crazy. why do they feel the it's need to like touch the people? That's the person. Yeah, it's like if any guy, no matter who you are, grabs your arm, you're turned off. You know, well, like also come with you're, yeah. that's assault. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like if you don't want to be touching, someone's touching you. Yeah, yeah. that's God, so creepy. That's that's disgusting. disgusting. Um, all right, so let me go back to the story that I loved in the first place that I wanted to tell you guys. It's, it's very funny. Okay. Just, this is a funny, this is not the Jonas Brothers being mean. This is just a fan out of meet and greet having a bad experience. Okay, <laughs> she was awkward. Okay, tell me, tell <laughs> oh, me, tell so me. so good. <laughs> okay. All right, this email from Andrea says, I have a really funny story regarding the Jonas Brothers. It is easily my most embarrassing story to date. When the Jonas Brothers were popular and I was in eighth grade, my friend invited me to join her and skip school to go to a meet and greet with the Joe Bros, so of course I accepted. The nerves were getting the best of me all day long, and I had the worst stomach ache. When I finally got to the meet and greet line, I told the security guard that I really needed to use the bathroom. (laughs) He told me if I went to the bathroom, there was no way I can come back in line to meet the boys. Oh, no. So I decided to stick it out. I asked the man how long the line would be, and he said one hour. Oh, God. I did the best I could for about 30 minutes. Oh, shit. She peed her pants. She shit herself. But then, oh my I think God. you can assume what happened next. Let's just say I didn't make it to the bathroom. 
Most people would probably run out of the room when that happens to them. But I couldn't tell my friend that this happened, so I pretended that nothing happened. I stayed in line with shit in my pants for more than Shut 30 the minutes. Fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I also went into the meet and greet room and met them with shit in my <laughs> pants. And I could see them talking to each other Ashley. saying, what the hell is that smell? Ashley. I couldn't believe no this happened, way. but it's the funniest story to date. And I hope you like it and have a great day. <laughs> she literally thought it'd be better to meet them with shit in her pants than not meet them at all. I Honestly, probably would have I, done the same as in my 20 year old. I think all of us would have self. that mentality, right? Yeah. It's like if you went all the way out there, but holy shit, if they were saying, what is that smell? I know. I would How, really? Die. That like really, it, it like, I mean, I remember your pants when that I much? shit myself in second grade, it smelled bad. Really? Yeah. It's like not more than like no. a fart. Cause like a fart isn't going to travel to like them on the other side of the table necessarily. She's probably standing next to them taking a picture. Yeah, you're right. That's not a table setting. It's them next to each it's other. Just it's like sitting hugging. There. Oh my god! So did she go to a concert afterwards? Yeah, I guess so. I guess she the just shit took her, her underwear. Pants. Oh my god! Wow. Good it must have been story. diarrhea, right? Oh, running down her leg. So I would hope crazy. it's honestly solid. Easier to clean up. Just well, it's gonna be stickier. Stinky. Stinky. Okay, let's take a break talking about celebrities and talk about money which is kind of you know the same thing money fame celebrity <laughs> <laughs> that's my best transition possible guys that was pretty good Ash. let me tell you about robin hood robin hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks options cryptos all commissioned free they strive to make financial services work for everyone not just the wealthy which means that they don't charge brokerage fees. Like, that's nuts. Other brokerages can charge up to $10 for every trade, but Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, which means you can trade stocks and keep all your profits. I'm not really sure how they do it. It's very nice for us, but uh, I don't know how you're making your money, Robinhood, but thanks for letting me keep mine. It's simple. It's intuitive. It's got a clear design, so you're going to know what you're doing. It's a clear-to-digest, easy-to-digest way to invest your money. It's really good for millennials. So I recently downloaded the Robin Hood app, and I love it, guys, because, I mean, talk about hashtag adulting. Like, I, <laughs> my dad's always like, Naz, you need to invest into yeah. multiple things. Like, we've all heard this in that one finance class we got our entire lives in mm-hmm. school as millennials, mm-hmm. and it's true, and this is the easiest way to do it. So I really encourage you guys to look at your finances, take care of them, invest in um, multiple things. So download Robinhood. And right now, Robinhood is amazing because they're giving all of our listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. And all you guys have to do is sign up at getit.robinhood.com. That's getit.robinhood.com. Come on, everyone. Free Apple, Ford, or Sprint. Make your money work for you. All right, so speaking of boy bands, uh, Lauren and I have met the Backstreet Boys a number of times. I actually have found in our history of meeting celebrities, boy banders are almost always the nicest. Mm -hmm. Um, Between 90 degrees when we met them at the Dream Hotel in New York, oh my gosh, they were so nice. Um, to Lance Bass, probably being one of the the most warm, welcoming celebrities. Wait, did you say Backstreet Boys are insane? We're, the story we're about to read got is Backstreet. It's Backstreet Boys. Got it. And I said that we've met them a number of times, Backstreet Boys, and they could not be friendlier. Mm-hmm. They're like the nicest group of guys. And Nick, Nick and, and AJ is palpable. And Jer- you know, you know, Jared, <laughs> Jared here. Naz. The best. Naz met them too, and they're just so oh. great. This girl, Kristen, didn't necessarily have the greatest experience with Backstreet. And the only reason I'm okay to read this is because it happened in 2001. And she was able to witness something that was like historic in boy band and boy band history. All right, let's hear it. Okay. So she goes, this story takes place when BSB were at the height of their career. They had five sold out shows in Boston for their black and blue tour. A few friends and I decided to stalk 
a few swanky Boston hotels and eventually figured out they were staying at the Ritz Carlton. Security have been notice have been noticing us stalking out the place and they were keeping a close eye on us. Lauren and I that have been there a bell. time or two. I'm pretty sure Lauren and I were kicked out of a hotel. We were. Mom must have been so embarrassed. Is that for Jonas Brothers? <laughs> no, for no, American, American Idol. Idol. Oh, Lauren God. and I were going through the hallways. Every single every hallway. Floor. I know you guys and we were playing Carrie Underwood's music and we're like, Carrie, creepy mom. Constantine, oh, Anthony, you guys Bo, play- where are you? <laughs> you guys would play the music like, and then ask work? for people. That's crazy. We were so weird. And then they saw us on the cameras and they're like, <laughs> and your mom they went up to my mom. mom they the went lobby. up to mom and they're like, are those your daughters? <laughs> it's like, okay, continue on. That's, so <laughs> and that's crazy. one of the things that you think about at night and you're like, oh <laughs> exactly. my God, how do I go exactly. on? <laughs> you're like, how did I do that? <laughs> Okay, so they end up on a random floor. And she goes, when we got off the elevator, I literally bumped right into Kevin and as he was trying to get on the elevator. He was nice enough and said, hey, guys, what's up? But I could tell he was not in a good mood. When I saw Brian standing in an open doorway of his hotel suite on the phone, having a he, she then saw Brian having a conversation on the phone. It was very <sighs> heated with somebody. There was a manager or someone on their team standing right next to him asking if everything was okay. And he very steam he very sternly and he very sternly said no things are definitely not okay we stood there very calmly without taking pictures trying to be respectful just hoping that we would get a chance to speak to one of our beloved backstreet boys mind you this was 2001 so the opportunities to meet bsb are not like they are today this was still the time where my walls were also covered in posters and i truly thought that nick Carter mm-hmm. and I were going to get married. So I hear <laughs> some of so the other people. So we hear some other arguing taking place and security had been called up to escort us out of the hotel. The moment I had jumped up for so long was ending and I didn't even get a smile autograph or a picture with one of these boys that I loved way too much. I was really disappointed. To he- I was really disappointed that Brian couldn't take a second to acknowledge my presence. But the next day I became aware that I was witnessing Something that no other fan would ever witness. The boys appeared on TRL the next day wow. to announce that AJ was going to rehab and their tour was postponed. Oh, wow. I had shit. caught the tail end of Kevin breaking down the door to <gasps> AJ's suite. Oh and, my God. And Brian <gasps> on the phone figuring out how this whole ordeal was going to be handled. Oh, that is my awesome. God. Isn't that insane? Well, it's awesome. I mean, no. well, it's very well <laughs> done. Awesome see that. But if, that's like the craziest thing. If you watch experience. their documentary, you'll see like how big of a moment that was in Backstreet Boys history. AJ did heroin. They found him yeah. doing heroin in that room, did right? They? Was mm-hmm. it? Yeah. It was bad so stuff. Was bad. Like he opened the door and saw like a terrible yeah. sight. Yeah. yeah. You guys have to watch a documentary if you want. Wow. It's so good. What was it called? I forget. If you like look up Backstreet Boys documentary, you'll find What was it called? I don't know, but I mean, I thought that was crazy. It was called one of their new songs, I think. Um, yeah, that's insane. That is like Never the gone? one thing in Backstreet Boys. No. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, that is traumatic. Up, I don't so know don't why. What to. I mean, obviously, how old was I when that shit was going down? That would have been... 2001. 2001, so I was so in like fifth were, grade. I, it, yeah. it didn't, like, strike home with me. But if, yeah. like, my favorite BAM, you know, member... Yeah, once we have her heroin, I'd be like shook. I know, right? Show them what you're made of, which was oh, one of their yeah. songs. It was the name of the documentary. So we got a number of emails about celebrities coming out of their concert or a TV appearance or whatnot, and they don't stop to sign stuff or take pictures with the fans that have waited out there by the gate for them. And I don't think those should necessarily be included in these horrible. What do you? Guys, how do you guys feel about that? I feel like. I don't know. I feel like maybe sign like one or two. I feel like maybe you go up to them like as a group, be like, "Hey guys, thank you so much!" Like super On outgoing, super out. friendly. Yeah. Be like, "Like, does anybody have a camera? We can take a big group group picture or something like that." Just like mm-hmm. try like, I have two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like for people to just kind of be like wave after that long, that's kind of rude. And also, it depends on how shitty. Like, if you're waiting out there for like five hours in the cold, it's freezing cold. It's a lot shittier. 
than someone else experience waiting an hour in the warmth. Yeah. You yeah. But you also have to know, obviously, there's like a risk. You're not going to like, yeah, the you person's gotta not going to stop. If yeah. That's do your problem. Yeah. See, for it's, it's not a given. Like, I remember when we first started like waiting out by the buses. Yeah. It was for American Idol and stuff mm-hmm. where you're like, okay, American Idol. They're, yeah. Their they, careers they, are up and coming. They right. need the fan support. Right. They're right. so excited to be doing this. So you can expect them to do that. Yeah. But then, like, this one girl wrote in about Adam Levine. It's like, Adam Levine isn't really required to come and, like, say hi to the bus, like, the people waiting by the buses. Right, yeah. I don't think that that's, like, a given. Like, you should expect it. It's not it. a given, but it would be nice it's if nice. everyone would, like, stop to at least for, like, one or two people. Even if you have, like, a flight to catch. Or, I like- saw this video yesterday um, of Billie Eilish. Who's um, that? Who's that? She's a singer and everyone's losing their shit over. Um, she's, oh. like, so good with her fans. And they're, like, comparing her to Kylie. And someone grabbed Kylie's arm or shirt or something. And she goes, <gasps> do not touch me. And then they're, like, comparing the two. I'm like, that person grabbed her shirt. Of course she's going to snap back at them. Oh, yeah, of course. Fans are, like, when I, when we cover BTS, you know, the Korean pop yeah. group um, at Clever. And I watch videos. This is, like, the biggest boy band in the world right yeah. now. And if you guys YouTube videos of like their appearances Scary. overseas, like it's terrifying. I know like, the there's multiple fans ambulances. Are like, are they Korean? Yeah, but K-pop. people are insane. Wow, well, yeah, crazy. Yeah. They like jump on them. Yeah. I'd be so scared to be a celebrity in this day. And age. I mean, yeah, I probably wouldn't go out for pictures too if I was like had that risk. And there's all these stalkers. It's just yeah. like if you take one picture, then it's you're starting something. So it's either like I can see how they do all or nothing. Right. Uh this is not something that is like borderline. This is just really Tell me. Rude. Bad? Oh, okay. Yeah. My friend and I moved to LA about six years ago, and one of our first celebrity sightings was Amy Poehler. Ooh. My friend and I were walking in Beverly Hills one afternoon on a random street, and we walked past a hotel, and no one was in sight. No their fans, no paparazzi, no one. And all of a sudden, Amy Poehler and her publicist are walking toward us, heading towards the hotel that we were near. I'd always admired her, and I was so excited to see her in person. We decided to approach her, and since there wasn't anyone around and we weren't drawing any extra attention, we just said that we were fans of her work, and we'd asked if she'd take a picture with us. Amy didn't even speak. Her publicist answered for her, and she goes, she only signs autographs. And then we just kind of walked away. I was pretty shocked, and I expected more from Amy Poehler. I haven't watched any of her movies since. I don't think that's Damn. that rude. I don't think Why it's that bad either. Why didn't they get an autograph? Guys, yeah. Just her publicist to say she doesn't do anything well, that, other than autographs. If her publicist wasn't there, I'm sure she would have said something, exactly. but the the exactly. publicists always feel like it's their job to protect them from, like, right, whatever. that's what she gets employed so to do. Silent, no. Well, I mean, if someone's speaking up, the other person doesn't need to speak. And why didn't that girl get an autograph then? I don't want my picture taken all the time. I look like shit half the time. That's I'm out why. In LA. I, I, guess I mean, I get it. I actually, I, just, I think that's the one story I don't even think is bad. I just don't she like the way that she didn't say like "sorry, girls" or like saying something, something. Just like to have somebody else speak for you as you stand there, like dead face. Yeah, that yeah. is kind of weird. That yeah. is kind of. That weird. is also the publicist. Exactly. Job, like of. the publicist is probably like, I got to handle this right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, this is my time like, to shine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, another dead faced example is from this girl who met tyra banks and tyra has Ooh. apparently has like the worst reputation yeah with really. meeting fans she goes i was eating in santa monica a bubba gum shrimp and my waitress <laughs> told me that tyra banks was behind us and we're from bubba gum i know isn't that shocking Look, on the board if she interrupts her while eating bubba gum shrimp that's a bad move let's hear the rest okay yeah. so there she addresses that I hope she, she doesn't was, interrupt while eating that's a no-no we're from tennessee and thrilled to see a celeb so we went to the bathroom. We're from Tennessee and thrilled to see. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the bathroom, and when I get close to her table, as I walk by, I stop and say hello, and that I'm a big fan. But that didn't happen because the bodyguard stopped me in my tracks and said, please let Miss Banks eat as she stared straight ahead, acting like I was a stalker. By the way, she had no food, and she was just sitting there drinking water. Uh, Again, don't think it's rude. Yeah. I don't think it's rude if she's eating it. I don't think she, she's. It's rude if she comes up to it. If they come up to a table, you're right. It's not that bad. It's not bad. Yeah. I have. I wish I had more bad celebrity stories. I have so many good celebrity stories. But yeah, remember, I don't really have. Only remember good ones when me and my mom Jackson. sat next to Jason Siegel in San Diego. Uh, I vaguely remember this, but can you remind us? Remember when my mom was here? I don't. You don't think you told this story? I didn't tell you guys no. this. 
Well, are we going to do a good celebrity podcast? No, I should, just because they're, they're all good, good and they're just nice. Basically, like, he was sitting and eating, but it was like it was like a burger joint. So uh-huh. the table was like right next to ours. Uh-huh. You know, like literally, we could hear his conversation. But he was eating by himself, and a bunch of people asked him for a photo, and he's like, "Sorry, guys, like I'm eating," and that's he had a burger annoying. in his hand. Oh, totally, it's so that's so rude. that's so rude. Yeah. But when he was done eating, he started talking to me and my mom. And then my mom went to the bathroom and him and I started talking. Were you at a table or at a bar? Two no, at a tables. table. Two tables next to each other. Oh, okay. But you we know, like, like shake close, close by? Close. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Literally so close. And then my mom went to the bathroom and Jason Siegel was like, is that your mom? And I was like, yeah. And um, he's like, are you guys close? I'm like, well, we really weren't growing up, but like we are now. He's like, that's how my mom and my sister are. Oh, that's so and nice. he was telling me like how he loves San Diego and drove from Ohio. And I'm like, I can't believe this that is, is like, so we're getting cool. so And cool. he was the best, but everyone that walked up to him, I literally want, you guys know how I get, I literally wanted to be like, um, leave. That's yeah. so rude. Yeah. He probably really liked you because you just were sitting there eating too and not bugging. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. another thing. I feel like sometimes if you meet your favorite celebrity, it's better off if you just have conversation. You yeah. know, and just like focus on having a great conversation yeah. and don't ruin it with asking for a picture. You guys, it Neil doesn't apply Ashton. to like, that doesn't apply to like, you know, bachelor alum, you know, I don't know. I think it's good for you to say that because I feel like a lot of people in the society, you just strive to want the photo mm-hmm. because if you, you know, if you don't have a photo of it, it technically didn't happen. Yeah. And I think that's such a stupid mentality when like you can really connect with like a celebrity yeah. and have like a really cool encounter without bothering them for a photo yeah. yeah they just want normal conversation too so yeah honestly the more a-list they are the more you shouldn't ask for a photo yeah because they're bombarded all day long for it mm-hmm. and they probably are just refreshed i actually heard that milo likes that milo go. doesn't oh, like well. it milo doesn't love pictures but that's he funny. always loves well, he conversation took a picture with me well that's good and peter yeah. But we'll just pretend it was just me. So we have time <laughs> so for perfect. a couple more. All right. This one's Keep not like a, 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 not a... Not a crazy celebrity. Celebrity? Yeah. It's Tom Welling, a.k.a. Who's Su- that? You know, Superman from Smallville. Oh, okay. Wow. okay. But this was pretty rude, so... Oh, no. Um, so my friends and I were checking into a hotel, and we spotted Tom Welling. Wasn't sure if he was just a hot guy mm-hmm. or the hot guy from Smallville. Right. So my friend decided to end our argument once and for all and asked him. So she marched right up to him and said, Excuse me, are you... And then he, either hearing us or just being a douche, turned around and screamed, Yes! And he was so aggravated and he was so exaggerating in the way that he said yes and he was awful and just turned around and started shaking his head oh wow God. sorry we disturbed him in his natural he, habitat they probably were like is that him is that him is that? and then there was like yes it's me <laughs> i don't know but then he should also be flattered that people gave a shit about yeah. him all right that's weird. absolutely okay i think i have one more to read and it's with jason mraz cool oh that's random is yeah. it he with audrina again I don't know. I, Jason Mraz has had two songs, and he had he's like a celebrity. He hasn't had two songs. Yeah, but okay, it's, fine. It's, he's he was, was on okay. the hills. Wait, what? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wait, am I thinking of think the wrong person? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I thinking of? I always do this. Um, <laughs> Who did Audrina date on Ryan the Cabrera? Yes. Ryan Cabrera. Yes. <laughs> Ryan Cabrera is Same forever era. relevant you because guys. of one song. You guys, and it's his... Ashley Simpson show. You Ashley guys, Simpson. Ryan Cabrera and Jason Mraz in my head are the same exact person. <laughs> forever and always, I've always fucked them up. Well, I'll give this to Jason Mraz. He had the highest played song two years in a row, and it was the same song like his oh, I'm song yours? i'm no yours way. was the highest played and i don't know whatever year came out plus the year after All that's right, how overplayed see? that freaking song you want to hear a random yeah fact? he's so rich <laughs> mr brightside has been in the top 100 since like 2004 Fuck yes mr brightside really? isn't that weird someone told me that in an uber i don't know if it's true someone google it, it, it is on I believe all the time it's so. on all the time yeah. and that song really is incredible i mean the lyrics song. is a really feel. good it's a good song it was just a kiss top 100 since 2000 whatever it's a good song but for me it's still overplayed god they ruin all songs anyway starting out with this girl kiss. says i, I was like visiting this. it was only a kiss sorry it was, was only a kiss <laughs> 
Okay, continue. <laughs> I was visiting NYC with my family, and I found out that one of my favorite singers, Jason Mraz, was seeing the same musical my cousin was seeing. <laughs> Needless to say, I had to wait back for my chance to meet him, so she, like, went by the stage door. Right. I was standing back with my whole family, along with other fans outside the musical, waiting for the cast, and I was the only one in our group that knew what he looked like. So all of a sudden, I saw Jason, and I couldn't speak or breathe. Yep. (laughs) My family thought thought something was wrong with me until I yelled, It's Jason Mraz! No one around us cared who no one else around us cared who he was. So I started to speed walk to catch up with him oh. and ask for a picture. But then my mom also started running after me with the camera. And when <gasps> I asked, he didn't even stop walking or turn around. He just said, no, I've never been so disappointed in someone I looked up to. Mm. Yeah, that would be demoralizing for sure. Yeah, to run up to somebody, ask politely, and then him just be like, no, as he just walks yeah, forward. It's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. that's awk. Damn. It's awkward. Well, these were great. Do we have any like oh. positive ones we want to talk about? Well, I think we should do a whole podcast on like you good think ones. So? Yeah. Because, oh, I have one. Because that... I want to share my Larry David story. I have so yeah. many. How Justin Long saved my life. The Rock. I, you're right. You're, oh, those so are many great. Good ones. I met Lionel Rich, Richie. Who? Randy Jackson. Oh, we? yeah. <laughs> okay, so Nash has a ton of positive ones she wants to share at one point. Yeah. Well, the Randy Jackson one's so short. <laughs> I, he was at by. Chateau Marmont, and yeah. I was, like, wasted, and I walked by him, and I was like, that's going to be a no from me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he just started laughing. So good, though. <laughs> Nash, only you can pull that off, though. If I said that, I'd be like... So Try. long for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can pull it off. Oh, yeah. No. Sometimes no. I surprise myself. Sometimes I'm actually cooler with celebrities than I am with like friends. Guys, like, things we, come out of my mouth yeah. better. Can we talk about the fact that like Lance Bass, like Lance Bass from Instinct, is like best friends with Ashley? Okay, <laughs> let's not freak Lance out. He's texted me, but that is pretty nuts. That's that's let's, crazy. Let's just play it down, though. Yeah, I mean you, you can know, chill, chill, chill. chill right now. Yeah, chill. I mean like let's whatever. Chill. Okay. Well, um, if we have nothing else to share, then I yeah. guess that's it for the Bad Celebrity Stories podcast. Guys, tell us your I don't get it. Tell us what topics you want on the Facebook group. Also, we're having a meetup October 28th in LA. All the information on the Facebook group. Send us some like um, help. I need help in this random situation. We'll be like, um, Dr. What was, that? what was that show on the radio that was really creepy? Miss Cleo? No, no, no. Ashley. <laughs> I'm listening. Who was Creepy? It? The one who would talk really quietly and she'd offer her Delilah? help. Delilah? Is it Delilah? Yeah. Talk really creepily. You mean the oh, woman you're that's talking like... about, Are you talking about Glenn Hollis? Maybe. Yeah, well, Glenn Hollis. Well, Lauren, Glenn Hollis was DC local. Okay. Yeah, well, who's Glenn DC Hollis? DC local. <laughs> Glenn <laughs> Hollis. And then, then Delilah's syndicate oh, show okay. took over his nighttime show. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, we'll offer advice of any kind for you guys. Yeah, yeah like we've been... Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, we've been getting some emails, so we're going to do a whole podcast of like a Q&A if you guys want to submit those too. And follow our Instagram at I Don't Get It Podcast. Bye, Thank guys. You. Have a great week. Love Bye. you. Podcast. Bye. Bye. I don't get it. Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Babes and Babies, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.